Hi, I'm Rachel Meliotis, the senior editor at O'Reilly Media, and I am here at Strata RX with Michael Gold, who is the COO of Farsight, and Lise Worthen Chowdhury, who is a research assistant professor at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, and has an MFA in dance and was hired as the associate director of the Motion Analysis and Recovery Biomechanics Laboratory, which is pretty cool. Uh, thanks. So now you guys, and not just you guys, but your companies and, and uh, institutions have teamed up to make cardiac rehabilitation more livable, which is great. Um, first of all, explain what cardiac rehabilitation is um, and then some of the challenges you see with it. Cardiac rehabilitation is basically exercise and education, but it's physician-directed. So you know that even though you just had a heart attack, your physician is monitoring your blood pressure, your heart rate. You're, you are going to be okay when you exercise. Um, some of the challenges uh, involved in cardiac rehabilitation is that it's really hard to exercise. Um, and especially in this population, people who've had a heart attack, they probably weren't exercising before they had the heart attack. So to say, okay, well, you know, to save your life, you're going to have to exercise. It sounds like it's an easy sell, but it's not. It's a big behavioral change. I, I would agree with you. Um, so how can data really help with this? Um, with the inpatient health care, outpatient services, like the rehab, um, and just basically in, this, in, in the cardiac sort of rehabilitation and changing behaviors. Sure. We see cardiac rehab kind of in between the inpatient and the outpatient. So you have the kind of quantified self-movement that individuals are taking control of their own behaviors. And then, unfortunately, when people have heart attacks, they're in the hospital. Cardiac rehabilitation, as Lee said, is the standard of care to help people get better after they've had heart attacks. And some of the challenges, as Lee mentioned, is that it's difficult, and that leads to people not completing the cardiac rehabilitation. And that's not great because there are plenty of studies that show that cardiac rehabilitation increases quality of life, decreases morbidity. And so what we're trying to do with data is one, identify the drivers of adherence and not adherence. So what are the aspects of your demography, your age, your gender, your marital status, your position in the home, whether or not you have a car, how far you drive. We have to say there are a lot of people doing great work in that space. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to add something. Mm -hmm. And do you want to tell them what we're doing? Sure. What we're adding is uh, elements of seasonality, as we mentioned in our talk. If it's 5 o'clock in January and it's dark and cold and you've just worked all day, it's much harder to motivate to go to a cardiac rehabilitation program than, let's say, if it's sunny in June and you know bright outside at, at 5 p.m. And so we're looking at seasonality. We're also looking at uh, comorbidity and concomitant disease. So if you have other uh, ailments um, at the same time that you had a heart attack or following, you know, how does that impact your uh, likelihood to finish cardiac rehabilitation? So. Now, where does data fit in? Identifying what those drivers are and adding some new elements to it. And that helps us to really triage what patients we think are least likely to complete that program. In an ideal world, you're going to offer these types of support to everybody. But we know there are trade-offs in the real world. So really, who are those folks that need the most support? And then second, what we're doing is sending those folks text messages from their family and friends that they've that we've banked at the beginning of their cardiac rehabilitation. So we're trying to leverage really the positive aspects of social networks while being mindful of the fact that people who are in their 60s and 70s having heart attacks might not be super comfortable with Facebook. So making these types of engagements really socially relevant and encouraging them through these connections to their friends and family to go to cardiac rehabilitation. And so by understanding these drivers of adherence, we can get a baseline for what people do and don't do. And that enables us to really test and understand how well we are impacting behaviors in a different way. That's great. So, so it sounds like you've already got some data and that that's helping inform how you treat other uh, patients, which is fantastic. So tell me a little bit, since I, I don't think I have not been in cardiac rehab, <laughs> sort of how, how your um, plan is different than what's out there. I mean, you talked a little bit about social media. Mm -hmm. um, day to day, is it quite different? Is it something that you think that other uh, centers could pick up really easily? Definitely, definitely. Um, in general, we want to make any intervention just easier, more like you do it because you breathe, you do this intervention, you just do it. Um, make the healthy choices easier. And so 
that's what we're anticipating um, we're going to get by by bringing in the social network. So instead of, you know, nobody wants to have a heart attack. Nobody wants to have a stroke, right? You come out, you just want to get back to your life. So um, you can't just get back to your life. You need to do these extra things. We know this. Uh, lots of reasons. Lowering costs, higher quality of life, living. These are very important reasons. They're apparently not compelling because people aren't doing the rehabilitation. So what if instead of just sending people back to their lives and saying, you know, good luck, um, you know, we really want you to come to this, but we know you probably won't. Uh, what if we had, uh, if we leveraged their existing social network to say, no, really, you can do this. And there are lots of platforms that do that now, whether it's text messaging, Facebook, there's some new ones coming out, um, where the existing asset of the social network, the people who want to help are actually given an, uh, an avenue that's been vetted. And I think another aspect of what's exciting about our project is the team that, that makes it up. So we're, we're doing a lot of human subject research, which mm -hmm. is not always paired with data science or, or kind of big data analytics. Yeah, really well. yeah. So Farsight is providing kind of the, the data science, the PhD level data science support. Lise and her team are the clinical researchers, mm -hmm. uh, along with a, a cardiologist, Dr. Martha Gulati who is you know, overseeing cardiac rehabilitation. And then we also have a behavioral economist who's a professor at Harvard University, uh, who's a part of the team helping us think through how do we make these choices the most easy for these patients to make. And, and so kind of bringing all that together, we hope is gonna provide the best possible outcome for patients. One final question, um, I mean, this might be at my not understanding cardiac rehab, but so is, have you done things that you hope, you know, say cardiac rehab lasts three, six months or whatever? 36 weeks. 36 weeks, okay, wow. Uh, 30, sorry, 36 sessions. Okay, 36 sessions. Have, has any of the data or the stuff that you're doing um, looking towards beyond that time to set up healthy... Um, yeah, that's a great question. When we um, design our clinical trials, we always look at retention, retention of the behavior. And ideally, you look at the retention um, a couple months out, and then you go at least a year out. Um, usually, we don't get to look much longer than that, but we hope to at least look a year out. Yes. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for joining me today, and thanks for your good work. Thank you.